The Aral Sea was an endoric lake, one with no outflow, lying between Kazakhstan, Aktobe and Kaizilorda regions in the north and Uzbekistan, Karakalpakstan autonomous region in the south. The name roughly translates as Sea of Islands, referring to over 1100 islands that had dotted its waters in the Turkic languages Aral means island archipelago. The Aral Sea drainage basin encompasses Uzbekistan and parts of Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Afghanistan and Iran, formerly the fourth largest lake in the world with an area of 68,000 square kilometers, 26,300 square miles. The Aral Sea has been shrinking since the 1960s after the rivers that fed it were diverted by Soviet irrigation projects. By 1997, it had declined to 10% of its original size, splitting into four lakes, the North Aral Sea, the eastern and western basins of the once far larger South Aral Sea, and one smaller intermediate lake. By 2009, the southeastern lake had disappeared and the southwestern lake had retreated to a thin strip at the western edge of the former Southern Sea. In subsequent years, occasional water flows have led to the southeastern lake sometimes being replenished to a small degree. Satellite images taken by NASA in August 2014 revealed that for the first time in modern history the eastern basin of the Aral Sea had completely dried up. The eastern basin is now called the Aralkum Desert. In an ongoing effort in Kazakhstan to save and replenish the North Aral Sea, a dam project was completed in 2005. In 2008, the water level in this lake had risen by 12 meters 39 feet compared to 2003. Salinity has dropped, and fish are again found in sufficient numbers for some fishing to be viable. The maximum depth of the North Aral Sea is 42 meters 138 feet as of 2008, the shrinking of the Aral Sea has been called one of the planet's worst environmental disasters. The region's once prosperous fishing industry has been essentially destroyed, bringing unemployment and economic hardship. The water from the diverted Syr Darya River is used to irrigate about 5 million acres 2 million hectares of farmland in the Fergana Valley. The Aral Sea region is also heavily polluted, with consequential serious public health problems. UNESCO added the historical documents concerning the development of the Aral Sea to its memory of the World Register as a unique resource to study this environmental tragedy. Formation Geographer Nick Middleton believes that the AMU Darya did not flow into the shallow depression that now forms the Aral Sea until the beginning of the Holocene, and it is known that the AMU Darya flowed into the Caspian Sea via the Uzboy Channel until the Holocene. The Syr Darya formed a large lake in the Kizil Kum during the Pliocene known as the Minebulic Depression. History Most of the area around the Aral Sea was inhabited by desert nomads who left few written records. However, the Oxus Delta to the south has a long history under the name of Khwarezm. It was once the westernmost border of Tang Dynasty China. Naval history Russian naval presence on the Aral Sea started in 1847, with the founding of Raimsk, which was soon renamed Fort Aralsh, near the mouth of the Syr Darya. Soon, the Imperial Russian Navy started deploying its vessels on the sea. Owing to the Aral Sea Basin not being connected to other bodies of water, the vessels had to be disassembled in Orenburg on the Ural River, shipped overland to Aralsh presumably by a camel caravan, and then reassembled. The first two ships, assembled in 1847, were the two masted schooners named Nikolai and Mikhail. The former was a warship, the latter was a merchant vessel meant to serve the establishment of the fisheries on the Great Lake. In 1848, these two vessels surveyed the northern part of the sea. In the same year, a larger warship, the Constantine, was assembled. Commanded by Lieutenant Alexei Budakov, Alexei Budakov the Constantine completed the survey of the entire Aral Sea over the next two years. The exiled Ukrainian poet and painter Taras Shevchenko participated in the expedition, and painted a number of sketches of the Aral Sea coast. For the navigation season of 1851, two newly built steamers arrived from Sweden, again by caravan from Orenburg. As the geological surveys had found no coal deposits in the area, the military governor-general of Orenburg Vasily Porovsky ordered, "...as large as possible supply." 
of saxol Haloxylon amadendron, a desert shrub, akin to the creosote bush to be collected in Aralsh for use by the new steamers. Unfortunately, saxol wood did not turn out a very suitable fuel, and in the later years, the Aral flotilla was provisioned, at substantial cost, by coal from the Don base. This was part of the Russian conquest of Turkestan. Irrigation canals in the early 1960s, the Soviet government decided the two rivers that fed the Aral Sea, the Amu Darya in the south and the Syr Darya in the east, would be diverted to irrigate the desert, in an attempt to grow rice, melons, cereals, and cotton. This was part of the Soviet plan for cotton, or white gold, to become a major export. This temporarily succeeded, and in 1988, Uzbekistan was the world. S largest exporter of cotton the construction of irrigation canals began on a large scale in the 1940s many of the canals were poorly built allowing water to leak or evaporate from the Karakum canal the largest in central asia perhaps 30 to 75% of the water went to waste today only 12% of uzbekistan s irrigation canal length is waterproofed of the 47,750 km of interfarm irrigation channels in the basin, only 28% have anti-infiltration linings. Only 77% of farm intakes have flow gauges, and of the 268,500 km of on-farm channels, only 21% have anti-infiltration linings, which retain on average 15% more water than unlined channels. By 1960, between 20 and 60 cubic kilometers (4.8 and 14.4 cu mi) of water each year was going to the land instead of the sea. Most of the sea water supply had been diverted, and in the 1960s, the Aral Sea began to shrink. From 1961 to 1970, the Aral's level fell at an average of 20 cm a year. In the 1970s, the average rate nearly tripled to 50 to 60 cm 20 to 24 in per year, and by the 1980s, it continued to drop, now with a mean of 80 to 90 cm 31 to 35 in each year. The rate of water use for irrigation continued to increase, the amount of water taken from the rivers doubled between 1960 and 2000, and cotton production nearly doubled in the same period. The disappearance of the lake was no surprise to the Soviets, they expected it to happen long before. As early as 1964, Alexander Asarin at the Hydroproject Institute pointed out that the lake was doomed, explaining, It was part of the five year plans, approved by the Council of Ministers and the Politburo. Nobody on a lower level would dare to say a word contradicting those plans, even if it was the fate of the Aral Sea." The reaction to the predictions varied. Some Soviet experts apparently considered the Aral to be "...nature's error," and a Soviet engineer said in 1968, "...it is obvious to everyone that the evaporation of the Aral Sea is inevitable." On the other hand, starting in the 1960s, a large-scale project was proposed to redirect part of the flow of the rivers of the Ob Basin to Central Asia over a gigantic canal system. Refilling of the Aral Sea was considered as one of the project's main goals. However, due to its staggering costs and the negative public opinion in Russia proper, the federal authorities abandoned the project by 1986. From 1960 to 1998, the sea S surface area shrank by about 60%, and its volume by 80%. In 1960, the Aral Sea had been the world's fourth largest lake, with an area around 68,000 square kilometers (26,000 square miles) and a volume of 1,100 cubic kilometers (260 cu mi). By 1998, it had dropped to 28,687 square kilometers (11,076 square miles) and eighth largest. The salinity of the Aral Sea also increased, by 1990 it was around 376 grams per litre, by comparison, the salinity of ordinary seawater is typically around 35 grams per litre, the Dead Sea's salinity varies between 300 and 350 grams per litre. In 1987, the continuing shrinkage split the lake into two separate bodies of water, the North Aral Sea the Lesser Sea, or Small Aral Sea and the South Aral Sea the Greater Sea, or Large Aral Sea. In June 1991, Uzbekistan gained independence from the Soviet Union. 
Craig Murray, a UK ambassador to Uzbekistan in 2002, described the independence as a way for Islam Karimov to consolidate his power rather than a move away from a Soviet-style economy and its philosophy of exploitation of the land. Murray attributes the shrinkage of the Aral Sea in the 1990s to Karimov's cotton policy. The government maintained an enormous irrigation system which Murray described as massively wasteful, with most of the water being lost through evaporation before reaching the cotton. Crop rotation was not used, and the depleted soil and monoculture required massive quantities of pesticides and fertilizer. The runoff from the fields washed these chemicals into the shrinking sea, creating severe pollution and health problems. As the water supply of the Aral Sea decreased, the demand for cotton increased and the government reacted by pouring more pesticides and fertilizer onto the land. Murray compared the system to the slavery system in the pre-Civil War United States, forced labor was used, and profits were siphoned off by the powerful and well-connected. By summer 2003, the South Aral Sea was vanishing faster than predicted. In the deepest parts of the sea, the bottom waters were saltier than the top, and not mixing. Thus, only the top of the sea was heated in the summer, and it evaporated faster than would otherwise be expected. In 2003, the South Aral further divided into eastern and western basins. In 2004, the Aral Sea's surface area was only 17,160 square kilometers, 6,630 square miles, 25% of its original size, and a nearly five-fold increase in salinity had killed most of its natural flora and fauna. By 2007, the sea S area had further shrunk to 10% of its original size. The decline of the North Aral has now been partially reversed following construction of a dam see below, but the remnants of the South Aral continue to disappear and its drastic shrinkage has created the Aralcom, a desert on the former lake bed. The inflow of groundwater into the South Aral Sea will probably not in itself be able to stop the desiccation, especially without a change in irrigation practices. This inflow of about 4 cubic kilometers .96 cu -me per year is larger than previously estimated. The groundwater originates in the Pamirs and Tian Shan Mountains and finds its way through geological layers to a fracture zone at the bottom of the Aral. <laughs> Impact on environment, economy, and public health the Aral Sea is considered an example of ecosystem collapse. The ecosystems of the Aral Sea and the river deltas feeding into it have been nearly destroyed, not least because of the much higher salinity. The receding sea has left huge plains covered with salt and toxic chemicals resulting from weapons testing, industrial projects, and pesticides and fertilizer runoff. These substances form wind-borne toxic dust that spreads throughout the region. As a result, the land around the Aral Sea is heavily polluted, and the people living in the area are suffering from a lack of fresh water and health problems, including high rates of certain forms of cancer and lung diseases. Respiratory illnesses, including tuberculosis most of which is drug resistant, and cancer, digestive disorders, anemia, and infectious diseases are common ailments in the region. Liver, kidney, and eye problems can also be attributed to the toxic dust storms. All of this has resulted in an unusually high fatality rate among vulnerable parts of the population. The child mortality rate is 75 in every 1,000 newborns, and maternity death is 12 in every 1,000 women. The dust storms also contribute to water shortages through salt deposition. The overuse of pesticides on crops to preserve yields has made this worse, with pesticide use far beyond health limits. Crops in the region are destroyed by salt being deposited onto the land, and fields are being flushed with water at least four times per day to try to remove the salinity from the soils. The land is decaying, causing few crops to grow besides fodder, which is what the farmers in Kazakhstan are now deciding to seed. 230 The dust storms make regional winters colder, and summers hotter. The Aral Sea fishing industry, which in its heyday employed some 40,000 and reportedly produced one sixth of the Soviet Union's entire fish catch, has been devastated, and Former fishing towns along the original shores have become ship graveyards. Aral, originally the main fishing port, is now several miles from the sea and has seen its population decline dramatically since the beginning of the crisis. The town of Moynik in Uzbekistan had a thriving harbor and fishing industry that employed about 30,000 people, now it lies miles from the shore. Fishing boats lie scattered on the dry land that was once covered by water, many have been there for 20 years. 
Also destroyed is the muskrat trapping industry in the deltas of the Amu Darya and Syr Darya, which used to yield as many as 500,000 pelts a year. Solution Possible environmental solutions Many different solutions to the problems have been suggested over the years, varying in feasibility and cost, including Improving the quality of irrigation canals Using alternative cotton species that require less water Promoting non-agricultural economic development in upstream countries Using fewer chemicals on the cotton Cultivating crops other than cotton Redirecting water from the Volga, Ob and Irtysh rivers to restore the Aral Sea to its former size in 20-30 years at a cost of $30-50 billion Pumping sea water into the Aral Sea from the Caspian Sea via a pipeline, and diluting it with fresh water from local catchment areas in January 1994, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, and Kyrgyzstan signed a deal to pledge 1% of their budgets to help the sea recover. In March 2000, UNESCO presented their water-related vision for the Aral Sea Basin for the year 2025 at the Second World Water Forum in The Hague. This document was criticized for setting unrealistic goals and for giving insufficient attention to the interests of the area immediately around the former lake site, implicitly giving up on the Aral Sea and the people living on the Uzbek side of the lake. By 2006, the World Bank's restoration projects, especially in the North Aral, were giving rise to some unexpected, tentative relief in what had been an extremely pessimistic picture. Topic: Aral Sea Basin Program. Topic. The future of the Aral Sea and the responsibility for its survival are now in the hands of the five countries, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Turkmenistan. In 1994, they adopted the Aral Sea Basin Program. The program's four objectives are To stabilize the environment of the Aral Sea Basin To rehabilitate the disaster area around the sea to improve the management of the international waters of the Aral Sea Basin To build the capacity of institutions at the regional and national level to advance the program's aims Topic. ASBP, Phase 1 Topic. The first phase of the plan effectively began with the first involvement from the World Bank in 1992, and was in operation until 1997. It was ineffectual for a number of reasons, but mainly because it was focused on improving directly the land around the Aral Sea, whilst not intervening in the water usage upstream. There was considerable concern amongst the Central Asian governments, which realized the importance of the Aral Sea in the ecosystem and the economy of Central Asia, and they were prepared to cooperate, but they found it difficult to implement the procedures of the plan. This is due in part to a lack of cooperation among the affected people. The water flowing into the Aral Sea has long been considered an important commodity, and trade agreements have been made to supply the downstream communities with water in the spring and summer months for irrigation. In return, they supply the upstream countries with fuel during the winter, instead of storing water during the warm months for hydroelectric purposes in winter. However, very few legal obligations are binding these contracts, particularly on an international stage. Topic. ASBP, Phase 2 Topic. Phase 2 of the Aral Sea Basin Program followed in 1998 and ran for five years. The main shortcomings of Phase 2 were due to its lack of integration with the local communities involved. The scheme was drawn up by the World Bank, government representatives, and various technical experts, without consulting those who would be affected. An example of this was the public awareness initiatives, which were seen as propagandist attempts by people with little care or understanding of their situation. These failures have led to the introduction of a new plan, funded by a number of institutions, including the five countries involved and the World Bank. Topic. ASBP, Phase 3 Topic. In 1997, a new plan was conceived which would continue with the previous restoration efforts of the Aral Sea. 
The main aims of this phase are to improve the irrigation systems currently in place, whilst targeting water management at a local level. The largest project in this phase is the North Aral Sea project, a direct effort to recover the northern region of the Aral Sea. The North Aral Sea project's main initiative is the construction of a dam across the Berg Strait, a deep channel which connects the North Aral Sea to the South Aral Sea. The Koch Aral Dam is 8 miles long and has capacity for over 29 cubic kilometers of water to be stored in the North Aral Sea, whilst allowing excess to overflow into the South Aral Sea. North Aral Sea restoration work Topic. Work is being done to restore in part the North Aral Sea. Irrigation works on the Syr Darya have been repaired and improved to increase its water flow, and in October 2003, the Kazakh government announced a plan to build Dyke Kokaral, a concrete dam separating the two halves of the Aral Sea. Work on this dam was completed in August 2005. Since then, the water level of the North Aral has risen, and its salinity has decreased. As of 2006, some recovery of sea level has been recorded, sooner than expected. The dam has caused the small Aral sea level to rise swiftly to 38 metres 125 feet, from a low of less than 30 metres 98 feet, with 42 metres 138 feet considered the level of viability. Economically significant stocks of fish have returned, and observers who had written off the North Aral Sea as an environmental disaster were surprised by unexpected reports that, in 2006, its returning waters were already partly reviving the fishing industry and producing catches for export as far as Ukraine. The restoration reportedly gave rise to long absent rain clouds and possible microclimate changes, bringing tentative hope to an agricultural sector swallowed by a regional dust bowl, and some expansion of the shrunken sea. The sea, which had receded almost 100 kilometers (62 miles) south of the port city of Aralsh, is now a mere 25 kilometers (16 miles) away. The Kazakh foreign ministry stated that the North Aral Sea's surface increased from 2,550 square kilometers (980 square miles) in 2003 to 3,300 square kilometers (1,300 square miles) in 2008. The sea's depth increased from 30 meters (98 feet) in 2003 to 42 meters (138 feet) in 2008. Now, a second dam is to be built based on a World Bank loan to Kazakhstan, with the start of construction initially slated for 2009 and postponed to 2011, to further expand the shrunken northern Aral, eventually reducing the distance to Aralsh to only 6 kilometers (3.7 miles). Then, it was planned to build a canal spanning the last six kilometers, to reconnect the withered former port of Aralsh to the sea. <laughs> Future of South Aral Sea The South Aral Sea, half of which lies in Uzbekistan, was largely abandoned to its fate. Only excess water from the North Aral Sea is now periodically allowed to flow into the largely dried up South Aral Sea through a sluice in the dike. Discussions had been held on recreating a channel between the somewhat improved north and the desiccated south, along with uncertain wetland restoration plans throughout the region, but political will is lacking. Uzbekistan shows no interest in abandoning the Amu Darya River as an abundant source of cotton irrigation, and instead is moving toward oil exploration in the drying South Aral seabed. Attempts to mitigate the effects of desertification include planting vegetation in the newly exposed seabed, however, intermittent flooding of the eastern basin is likely to prove problematic for any development. Redirecting what little flow there is from the Amu Darya to the western basin may salvage fisheries there while relieving the flooding of the eastern basin. Institutional bodies Topic. The Interstate Commission for Water Coordination of Central Asia ICWC was formed on February 18, 1992 to formally unite the five Central Asian countries in the hopes of solving environmental as well as socio-economic problems in the Aral Sea region. These five states are the Republic of Kazakhstan, the Kyrgyz Republic, the Republic of Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and the Republic of Uzbekistan. The River Basin Organizations the BVOs of the Syr Darya and Amu Darya rivers were institutions called upon by the ICWC to help manage water resources. 
According to the ICWC, the main objectives of the body are River basin management Water allocation without conflict Organization of water conservation on transboundary water courses Interaction with hydrometeorological services of the countries on flow forecast and account Introduction of automation into head structures Regular work on ICWC and its body's activity advancement Interstate agreements preparation International relations Scientific research Training the International Fund for Saving the Aral Sea was developed on March 23, 1993 by the ICWC to raise funds for the projects under Aral Sea Basin programs. The IFAS was meant to finance programs to save the sea and improve on environmental issues associated with the basin's drying. This program has had some success with joint summits of the countries involved and finding funding from the World Bank to implement projects, however, it faces many challenges, such as enforcement and slowing progress. Vazrazdaniya <laughs> <laughs> Vazrazdaniya rebirth island, is a former island of the Aral Sea or South Aral Sea. Due to the ongoing shrinkage of the Aral, it became first a peninsula in mid-2001 and finally part of the mainland. Other islands like Kokaral and Barsa Kelms shared a similar fate. Since the disappearance of the southeast Aral in 2008, Vazrazdaniya effectively no longer exists as a distinct geographical feature. The area is now shared by Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. In 1948, a top-secret Soviet bioweapons laboratory was established on the island, in the center of the Aral Sea which is now disputed territory between Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. The exact history, functions and current status of this facility are still unclear, but bio-agents tested there included Bacillus anthracis, Coxiella burnetti, Francisella tularensis, Brucella suez, Rickettsia prowazekii, Variola major smallpox, Yersinia pestis, Botulinum toxin, and Venezuelan equine encephalitis virus. In 1971, weaponized smallpox from the island reached a nearby ship, which then allowed the virus to spread to the city of Aral. Ten people there were infected, of whom three died, and a massive vaccination effort involving 50,000 inhabitants ensued see Aral smallpox incident. The bioweapons base was abandoned in 1992 following the disintegration of the Soviet Union the previous year. Scientific expeditions proved this had been a site for production, testing and later dumping of pathogenic weapons. In 2002, through a project organized by the United States and with Uzbekistan's assistance, 10 anthrax burial sites were decontaminated. According to the Kazakh Scientific Center for Quarantine and Zoonotic Infections, all burial sites of anthrax were decontaminated. Topic: <laughs> Oil and gas exploration. Topic: Ergash Shazmatov, the Deputy Prime Minister of Uzbekistan, announced on August 30, 2006, that the Uzbek government and an international consortium consisting of state-run Uzbekneftegas, Lukoil Overseas, Petronas, Korea National Oil Corporation, and China National Petroleum Corporation signed a production-sharing agreement to explore and develop oil and gas fields in the Aral Sea, saying, the Aral Sea is largely unknown, but it holds a lot of promise in terms of finding oil and gas. There is risk, of course, but we believe in the success of this unique project." The consortium was created in September 2005. As of June 1, 2010, 500,000 cubic meters of gas had been extracted from the region at a depth of 3 km. <laughs> Topic. The plight of the Aral Coast was portrayed in the 1989 film Psy. Dogs by Soviet director Dmitry Svetozorov. The film was shot on location in an actual ghost town located near the Aral Sea, showing scenes of abandoned buildings and scattered vessels. In 2000, the Miramundo Foundation produced a documentary film called Delta Blues about the problems arising from the drying up of the sea. In June 2007, BBC World broadcast a documentary called Back from the Brink, made by Borna Alakani and Guy Creasy, that showed some of the changes in the region since the introduction of the Aklik Dam. Bakhtar Kudajnazarov's 2012 movie Waiting for the Sea deals with the impacts on people. 
S. Life in a Fishing Town at the Shore of the Aral Sea. In 2012 Christoph Passor and Alfred Diebold produced a 85-minute film with the title, From the Glaciers to the Aral Sea, which shows the water management system in the Aral Sea Basin and in particular the situation around the Aral Sea. The film was first screened at the Sixth World Water Forum in Marseille, France, in 2012 and is now available on the website, www.waterunites-sa.org and on Alfred Diebold's YouTube channel, Waterunitska. In October 2013, Al Jazeera produced a documentary film called People of the Lake, directed by Ensar Alte, describing the current situation. In 2014, director Poe Powell shot much of the footage for the Pink Floyd single, Louder Than Words. Video near the remains of the Aral Sea on the border between Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. Topic. See also. Topic. List of drying lakes. Dead Sea. Draining of the Mesopotamian marshes, a similar water diversion project in Iraq. Lake Chad. Salton Sea. Sistan Basin, a large wetland ecosystem in Afghanistan and Iran on the verge of collapse Sud, a large marshland in Africa, site of another planned large-scale draining project Tulare Lake, California's largest lake, drained between 1880–1970 References Topic. Further reading Topic. Micklin, Philip 2007. The Aral Sea Disaster. Annual Review of Earth and Planetary Sciences. 35 47–72. doi, 10.1146, Anarev, Earth.35.031306.140125. Retrieved May 17, 2008. Bissell, Tom. April 2002. Eternal Winter: Lessons of the Aral Sea Disaster. Harper's. pp. 41 to 56. Retrieved May 17, 2008. Bissell, Tom. 2004. Chasing the Sea: Lost Among the Ghosts of Empire in Central Asia. New York: Vintage Books. ISBN 9780375727542. Ellis, William S. February 1990. A Soviet Sea Lies Dying. National Geographic. pp. 73-93. Ferguson, Rob. 2003. The Devil and the Disappearing Sea. Vancouver, Raincoast Books. ISBN 1-55192-599-0. Kasperson, Jean, Kasperson, Roger, Turner, B. L. The Aral Sea Basin, A Man-Made Environmental Catastrophe. Dordrecht, Boston, Kluwer Academic Publishers. p. 92. ISBN 92-808-0848-6. Benthun, Francois, Renard, Philippe 2004. Indirect Estimation of Groundwater Inflows into the Aral Sea via a Coupled Water and Salt Mass Balance Model. Journal of Marine Systems. 47, 1-4, 35-50. doi, 10.1016.j.jmarsis.2003.12.007. Archived from the original on February 14, 2008. Retrieved May 17, 2008. Sir Jacobs, Damien, Gregoire, Marilor, Delhez, Eric, Nihol, J.C.J. Influence of the Aral Sea Negative Water Balance on its Seasonal Circulation Patterns, Use of a 3D Hydrodynamic Model. Journal of Marine Systems. 47, 1-4, 51-66. doi, 10.1016, Topic External links Topic Rivers Network, Aral Sea Watersheds, Webmap Post-Soviet Legacy, Aral Sea Pollution from the Dean Peter Krogh Foreign Affairs Digital Archives Aral Sea Foundation Union for Defense of the Aral Sea and Amudarya River SYR Darya Control and Northern Aral Sea Phase 1 Project. World Bank Group, Kazakhstan. December 2006. Aral Sea from Space Time Lapse Swedish Aral Sea Society Google Earth View of the Aral Sea